How many wedges do you really need in your golf bag? Let's do it, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel, make sure you consider hitting that subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and that'll tell you whenever I upload new content. Also, feel free to check out my Twitter page, that's up there. And if you do like Instagram and you like pictures, I post some pretty cool stuff on there, if I do say so myself, so check that out too. Now let's get back to this video on a really interesting topic for me. How many wedges do you need in your golf bag? Now wedges is a really interesting topic, especially since golf club manufacturers have started strengthening the lofts on irons, making gaps bigger and bigger and bigger between the lowest iron and the highest wedge. Hence the introduction a couple of years ago of the gap wedge. Who remembers a time where there wasn't such thing as a gap wedge? I remember when they were first released and I thought, a 52 degree wedge. Why on earth would I need one of them? But now they really are becoming more and more important. For me, if I didn't have a 52 degree wedge, pitching wedge at about, what, 46, 47, straight into a 56, nine degree gap, 10 degree gap. I don't think so. But then I guess it depends what kind of player are you? How versatile do you need to be? Do you need four or five different wedges to suit different shots? Or do you have the skill set to be able to manipulate that wedge into what you're trying to do with it. A lot of times we can get tricked into buying 30 different golf clubs for different scenarios on different golf courses, when really, would we surely not be just better off spending our time and money practicing or on lessons as to how to use these golf clubs to their full capabilities and then not have to worry about changing them all the time? So even in difficult circumstances there with the wind, we're right at the top of the hill here. I used a 60 degree wedge, de-lofted it and got it to come out low. So do I need a gap wedge? But it's not so much for around the greens, is it? I think if you've got even a little bit of skill with wedges around the greens, you can sort of get by. When I was younger and I was a junior, practicing with seven irons, six irons, three irons, chipping around the green it was just the norm and was just what we all did. So I feel like now, in my old age, I'm more versatile, I can, I can manipulate clubs if I need to. And that's a lesson for you guys at home, especially the juniors who are watching. Practice around the greens with as many clubs as you can. It's more like this scenario now, I've boomed the drive down here and I know that I'm gonna be left with about 100 yards in. It's a windy day. So a 56 degree, a 60 degree wouldn't do it. A pitching wedge would be way too strong and I'd have to be really good at judging the distance. Enter gap wedge. Now up until very, very recently, I was using a four wedge system, which I thought was a pretty productive four wedge system. A pitching wedge, a 50 degree, 55 degree and a 60 degree but I had a massive gap in the top end of my bag. I went straight from a three wood to a three iron and I decided that was costing me shots, it was costing me scoring. So now I have a three wedge system, pitching wedge, 52, 60, and I just make the most of the clubs I have. Do I feel like this is costing me shots and affecting my game? Absolutely not, I've hardly even noticed. And again, that all boils down to having the versatility and practicing with these clubs to make sure that I can use them in different scenarios. If I want to, I can play a high pitch shot with the gap wedge, not a problem. If I want to, I can play a low chip shot with the 60 degree. I just dynamically alter the loft. And that's allowed me to put the tailor-made gapper in the bag, fill that gap, pardon the pun, 
and it's given me more confidence throughout the bag that if I find myself at a distance that before I wasn't too comfortable with, now I am comfortable. I'm not going to say I'm going to put it on the green every time with a new hybrid. But I've got way more of a chance and because I've practiced with the new wedges, I don't feel like I miss the old ones. I still have a lob wedge, I still use a 60 degree. To me that's my favourite club in the bag and it always has been purely because I miss a lot of greens. What's your favourite club in your bag? A lot of people say the driver, but for me the lob wedge has to be the best because it saves me so often, and I mean so often. So I'm happy using that most of the time around the greens. Some people feel differently, some people like to play percentages and get the ball running as quickly as possible. And that's fine too, it's a personal thing. Short game is a personal thing. You guys need to play to your strengths, not mine. And it's a similar story out of bunkers. A lot of people hate bunkers and just have no clue what club to hit out of them. Practice, practice with different clubs, practice practice using the loft and the bounce of different clubs and it's going to improve your bunker play. Don't just go and buy five new wedges and expect that to get you out of a bunker every time. Because I could give you a shovel and you won't get out of a bunker every time if the technique isn't right. So I guess if you were hoping to watch this video and it'd be a conclusive answer, yes you need four wedges in the bag, they need to be a 56, 50, 60 and 45. I don't know why I went in that order. I'm sorry, that's not what you're gonna get. But what I'm hoping you've got is something a little bit more thought provoking rather than just going and buying wedges. Should you practice with the ones you've got? Should you practice with all your clubs? What difference does it make in the top end of the bag as to how many wedges you have in the bottom end? How versatile are you with your wedges? That's the real question here that you need to be asking yourself. Guys, I've been James Robinson, I'm here at Huddersfield Golf Club. I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you found it a little bit more insightful than maybe some of the videos that are just purely product based. This winter, go out there and maybe take one wedge out with you. Take a 56, take a 60, take a 50 and see how you get on, see how you can manipulate that club. Obviously don't do it if it's a big tournament, but if you're just going out with yourself or with your mates, challenge yourself. Challenge your skill set to make yourself a better golfer. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you ring the notification bell so you get a notification whenever I upload new content. Also, and also feel free to check out my Twitter and Instagram page. Guys, see you soon.